With the new year and new season of Naraka, some major updates have been introduced to Fairyland Penglai. Let's dive into them. Players can access the area through the event center or shortcut button on the home screen of the game. You can explore or play various mini games while you wait for your selected game lobby to begin. In the event center, you'll also be able to find a guide from the developers, but we'll be diving into all the various points listed there in this video. While little is available on the lore or backstory of the area, the island first became accessible in the mid to late months of 2023. Various updates have come to the island through patches and limited events. This is also the place you'll go to celebrate holidays, or perhaps have a cup of tea. There's a relatively intuitive map of the area that can be accessed in the same fashion as your map within the game. Let's take a tour around and look at the various areas and the new mini games that can lead to various prizes. In the center of the island is where you'll likely spend most of your time mingling. Here is where you'll find a new quest which involves teamwork as you must climb upon each other to a certain height to reach a floating page or flag. Completion will result in a reward. If you have no friends willing to help, you'll need to rely on the nearby strangers, which certainly won't work when your island is empty during slow times on the server. Hopefully you'll find a few friendly nearby souls to join in and help you get the prize. And before you ask, there is no shortcut by falling through the floating flags or books. A member of your group will have to spend a minimum duration in contact with the floating items to complete the task. All involved in your stack will be rewarded, not just the hero on top. The lowest hanging book will give you an emote called Just On Time, where you'll be able to spin and juggle a ceramic pot, if that's your kind of thing. With juggling skills like these, I may just have to quit making YouTube videos and become a performance artist. Hmm... On this side of the island is Wind's Abode, where you've likely visited for the ongoing Marshall Infinity event, ending on January 10th. However, I suspect this miniature island won't disappear once the event has concluded, but instead will display the winning school's flag permanently. And on that note, go Team Baji! You'll find plenty of kites in this area, as well as scattered around the island. Nearby is the first loading dock for riding a giant kite in the sky while also flying your own kite should you desire. Up to five people can join you on the magic carpet. Oops, magic kite. Unfortunately, I've only ridden solo and still searching for my perfect flying partner. Venturing back to the center of the island, you'll again pass what's known as Songbird Palace. Maybe now is a good time to listen to some music and discuss the new updates to the instruments. Hello, excuse me, sir. Will you play us a tune? Hello? Well, he's a bit shy. We'll revisit this again soon. Back in the central courtyard, you'll find another set of instruments. Play a tune, run around, or climb the Pantheon. Two interesting obelisks have also recently appeared. Anybody have a guess as to what these are? Heading through the Silver Moon Garden, you can say hi to the fish in the koi pond, but what you'll likely want to try and do is test your skill with the Sky High Racing. It's challenging, very challenging. In the event center, you'll be able to find the season challenge and weekly quest for Sky High Racing. This season's challenge is to complete the race in 20 seconds, which will result in a hero badge reward, which I doubt many will acquire. But maybe you can prove me wrong? I'm not going to make a fool of myself or claim I have much knowledge to help you finish the race in 20 seconds. But if I figure it out, I'll post a separate video with the strategy. For now, I'll just go over the basics with you. You have a maximum amount of 600 seconds, or 10 minutes. The timer begins the moment you cross over the starting threshold. You can use grappling hooks, but it adds an extra 30 seconds to your total runtime. Touching blue totems will reduce your time by four seconds, and red totems will add time, though the red totems don't currently seem to appear on the course. You'll need to be sprinting nearly the entire way and precisely landing your jumps Pulling yourself up is essentially game over. And don't worry if you fall, it starts you fresh. Towards the back section of the course, you'll find two separate slopes. You'll slide down these for speed. During the making of this tutorial, I gave the course a full run through numerous times. The best I could do is 50 seconds. Oh, hey guys, nice view, huh? I've got a lot of practicing to do as there will be no room for error if a quick completion is desired. You can get another look at the course from the nearby island of Mistaland. Here, you'll find the second boarding dock for the magic kite rides. You'll also find the fairy cave. In fairy cave are lots of cave drawings, but there isn't anything to interact with. 
If I had to bet, this area will be significant in the future. Oh, look. Someone's come to explore with me. Pretty relaxing cave, huh, friend? Shaking it like that towards me may just land you in a booty brawl. All that's left to discuss is the instruments and achievements. I've already shown you two of the three locations to find instruments, outside the Pantheon and Songbird Palace. We'll head back to Seraphic Quartet now, where we began, to visit the final instrumental setup. I'm going to hop onto the Gujing. You'll immediately be brought to a screen where you can choose sheet music. There's currently 16 tracks to choose from, all ranging in four difficulties. Easy, normal, hard, and expert. Once you've selected one, you'll begin the mini game, which is essentially a crossover between Naraka and Guitar Hero. Upon completion of the selected song, you'll be rewarded points towards your instrument proficiency, which of as this moment is only available for Suona and Gujang. In the future, the flute, drum, erhu, gong, and woodblock will also be at your disposal for leveling. Players can participate in a test when they reach proficiency at level three, six, and nine. Passing these tests can unlock the master mode, increasing the maximum music score recordings and earning other great rewards, including avatars and badges, which can be viewed along with your individual instrument progress in the guide. Before I burst somebody's eardrum, I'm going to get off the instruments. Oh, look, this girl has the right idea. I'll just be a patron. Listen to that sweet, sweet melody. Wow! Mozart would be proud. Before I conclude this overview, I want to point out the three new hero badges, which can be found in the achievement section. Mastering instruments and the sky racing will earn you points to continue leveling your total hero badge score. That should do it for the Fairyland Penglai Guide. I expect we'll see many more events, quests, and holidays here in the future. Let me know in the comments what part of the island is your favorite. Or perhaps there is some kind of feature you'd like to see. Become the legend you were destined to be. If you enjoyed this video, please help grow the channel by liking and subscribing. See you on the battlefield, brave warrior.